Before I go on. <laughs> Love does not vaunteth itself. Righteousness does not vaunteth itself. Oh, I'm full of righteousness now. I've hungered and thirst, and I'm righteous now. I'm righteous now. I'm righteous now. More righteous than you. What's your problem? I'm righteous now. Righteousness does not vaunt it itself. Let me explain to her what I mean. And I've talked about a little bit about this before, but here it is. When a person really experiences the presence of God, when a person experiences an experience of Jesus Christ and himself in a person's life, you cannot explain that. You cannot explain what that means. So Brother Dale asks me, so pastor, when you experience Jesus Christ himself in your life and all the years of your ministry, what's that like? This is, how, this is how you explain it. The more I experience Jesus in my life, the more I understand how unworthy I am. Yes. If Jesus Christ was to appear with us here this morning, we would instantaneously go prostrate on our faces as dead. You see, Jesus Christ could not talk about unworthiness because he was God. When he talked about himself, he talked about himself as God. And when God comes more into me, my experience is I'm more unworthy. And unworthiness produces growth. Pride and ego produces degrowth. So when Paul came along, Paul could speak of being unworthy where Jesus couldn't speak of being unworthy. Paul could, because as Jesus increased himself in Paul's life, Paul experienced how he was so unworthy of the presence of Jesus in his life. Folks, it's crucial for us to understand that enlightenment. We struggle with things in life, so we seek for an experience to end our struggling. When we should be seeking him who is the experience, and that's Jesus Christ. And that doesn't just come through Bible study or through going to church, but it comes from getting bothered by wanting to be empty and getting alone with God and saying, okay, God, you and I gotta have a come to Jesus talking. Show me what you mean. Show me what this means. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he didn't want his buddies to criticize him and think, oh, you're going over to the other side. You're crazy. Jesus was not about to explain the experience because he is the experience, so he explained himself. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not, Nicodemus, that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof.
but canst not tell whence it cometh or whether it goes. So in every one that is born of the Spirit. And then verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Nicodemus became troubled. How can these things be? The other day I was working with some sixth graders, sixth grade boys. Now I don't mean I'm not being critical, but they're lazy and not very smart. It's normal, right? It's just normal. Sixth grade boys. 11, 12 year olds. And there was an assignment, make a long story short, there was an assignment they were supposed to be doing. And I was challenging them to try to find the answer. And I was challenging them with different ways of looking at the problem as it was presented. Well, quite some time had gone by and it was time now to shift to another, to do something else. It was transition time. Well, the leader of these boys, when I say leader, the laziest <laughs> and the not very smartest of these boys, stayed with me and continued to ask me questions. And so I continued to try to get him to think of the problem, to find the answer from different perspectives. See it like this. And I had two items. I had a large item in my hand and a small item in my hand. And the question was, potentially could they be the same? In other words, do both of these items in their shapes, could they both be considered cereal boxes? <laughs> and so he just can't, he couldn't get it. And he was staying with me. So I said, I showed him again. I said, what do these two have in common? What do they have in common? Well, he, then he'd say, it's this, this. I said, well, no. Okay, you're getting warmer, but it's but not yet. And then you, and then you, kind of, kind of. I mean, he's now doing something I've never seen him do before. And what he was doing was that he was becoming troubled to find the answer, and it was bothering him that he couldn't get it. I looked at him after a short period of time. I said, Jimmy. Let me tell you something, dude. I said, I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. You are now starting to get it. And what you're starting to get, Jimmy, is you are now starting how to learn to learn. Because you can always quit. He's a quitter. I call him often, you're a quitter, Jimmy. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're quitting on trying to find the answer. No, I'm not. I don't know the answer. I hate old teacher. Oh, you're a quitter. No, I hate you guys. I hate us too. Now, don't stand in judgment of me. Oh, you should never call him a quitter. You're a mean pastor. You, you don't know. You don't. You have to just trust me. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm so proud of you because this is bothering you. How can these things be? How can these things be? I'm so proud of you because now it's starting to bother you. Now you're starting to learn how to learn. Christian people, you ever find yourself empty? Blessed are they who are empty, for they shall be filled. Amen. Blessed are they who seek after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after me, for I will fill them with me. Blessed are they that have many things in life, have blessings of life, have great marriage, have plenty of money, have good life, 
but find themselves empty. You are right in the position where you need to be for now an experience, not some experience, but to experience Jesus Christ. And folks, what the world needs more than anything today, and I would declare to you and I, what Christians need more than anything today, it's an experience of Jesus Christ. And it's not some experience of something in the past. We don't need those of us that are Pentecostal, another Pentecostal experience. Those of us that are charismatic, we don't need another charismatic experience. What we need is to be empty so that Jesus Christ will come and fill himself with himself. And whatever experience we experience from Jesus Christ filling us with himself, that will be the experience that he testifies of himself. And that's not something that we go, I have now, God, I've got more than you. God. What is your problem? I have so much more. So no. What the experience is, is, I'm so unworthy. I'm so unworthy. And I want more. I'm so unworthy. And I want more. I want more. Paul said, my prayer for you, Corinthians, you're so puffed up. You're so puffed up in your pride and arrogance. You have no idea. You have no idea. And my prayer for you is that your heart will be enlarged. Because as soon as your heart is more enlarged, your puffiness will decrease. And Jesus Christ will begin to increase. And my prayer for you folks this week is that you'll be troubled. How can this be? What does that mean? Get empty. Get empty. Because then you'll become filled. Can you say amen? Yes. Hallelujah.